Two Broke Rednecks present. So, what's the name of this film? Name Unknown. You don't know the name of the film? It's Name Unknown. So we're doing a film and don't know its name? It's called Name Unknown. Oh, okay. William B. McKesson is the judge of ominous warnings. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice, Batman finds out Robin is gay. Just another case, I suppose you'd call it. As judge of the juvenile court, I've handled hundreds. And they all failed to pay me. Take Edie Adams here. Can I leave her instead? Ran off with a stranger who promised to marry her. Well, he robbed the building and loan office. Well, in his defense, he did tell her he was making a withdrawal. A delinquent. Delinquent in good sense. I don't consider it in good sense. I can't get over it sometimes, how teenagers can be such suckers. Hey! You know what a sucker really is? Ask any carnival pitchman. Why, when you're going to tell us? Smart ...that he's putting something over on you. Take the old shell game. It's so but old, even wins. the shells have wrinkles. Why? Because the pea is really a ball of wax. It's never under the shell. It's under the operator's fingernail. He should clean All his right. fingernails What's more that often. To do with you? you never fell for the shell game. Don't fool yourselves. A lot of you have fallen for it, thrown away a future like nothing in the history of the world. It's for called what? marriage. Or a fling, a thrill. You think you're smart enough to get away with it. But you're just being a sucker. Why do I what suddenly I crave a blow pop? In good sense. Like these two, parked on a lonely road. Just she fell for the out-of-gas gag. There, all right. I promise this has never happened before. If you look hard enough, you can always find it. Especially if you're the sharp one. The guy or gal who doesn't have to listen to your parents' good sense. I sometimes wonder if my parents have good sense. Hey! You take care of yourself. That's what this couple thought. Friendly neighborhood, hold up, man. They found out how it feels to be a sucker. Too late to do any good, but they found out. It's sort of a wet and sticky feeling. What they didn't know Why, yes, was officer, I do have a con. ...practice of lurking in lonely lovers' lanes to prey on young people who don't know any better than to be there. Because Sometimes by law, an armed robber must be at every makeout spot. Their jewelry. Not this time. These two were fortunate to get out with their lives. Are we going to the drive-in? They'll never forget. And don't come out until you find that Jack. Don't you hate it when your boyfriend's sexual role-play involves him getting locked in the trunk and you getting Just raped? one case. And there are hundreds more in my files. So where this guy is a judge you get charged for the crime for being a victim? Or even in minutes. Let's take a look at another one. Mary Hansen. She was not much to look at, but she was a great lay. There's nothing wrong with babysitting in itself. It gives parents freedom. It gives you a chance to make some money. And learn how to handle small children. By smacking them around. You and your parents know it's Nellie Olson. Mary put an ad in a newspaper for sitting jobs. Did he say shitting jobs? No, sitting jobs. Well, that's different, because the other one would be quite nasty. But the idea of going to a strange home with someone you never saw before just because he answered an ad, well... Ever noticed that every killer in a Sid Davis film wears a bow tie? Other reason, and just because it's under the guise of babysitting doesn't make it all right. How much? Twenty dollars, same as in town. Oh, I'm just here to kidnap, rape, and murder your daughter. Is that all right with you? Why, certainly. I don't like her anyway. She's being abducted by Mr. Whipple. An hour and a half past time, and Mary isn't home yet. Mama's just now noticing because she's moist from reading Fifty Shades of Grey. You think it's silly to worry, don't you? 
After all, what could happen to Mary on a babysitting job? She could get liquored up with her boyfriend and then get pregnant. But the woman who what the hell do you want? She never even heard of the man, or of Mary Hanson. Nor does no, she give she a no shit. Idea where the man got this number. She then tells Mary's mom that if she's lonely, to come over and they can let out. And now, Mrs. Hanson, it is time to worry. But I'm afraid it's too late to do any good after letting your daughter drive away with a stranger. Look, Another Mary Hanson traded her life for a headline. Let's throw pennies on it. This one was just last week. It's in my files. You can read about it. Just don't tell now anyone, because juvenile cases are supposed to be confidential. Ethel Ryan's case, one of the nicest girls in her school. Except like when she's on her period, then she's a total Ethel bitch. Ethel and her friend Lynn thought they were too sophisticated for boys of their own age. They wanted somebody more glamorous. And the two in the convertible were just what they had in mind. What, 30-year-olds? The fact they've never seen either of them before should make a difference. Well, it does to Lynn for a minute. But Ethel talks her into it. Because Lynn is weak-willed and stupid. They grown up and smart enough to handle any situation. The knowing look of two people who have performed oral sex on each other. I'm a creepy wannabe Timberlake. Want to get raped? Well, why not? Lynn agrees finally. You two got riding the bike because I called shotgun. Dude, we need to get a van if we're going to pick up unsuspecting girls for rape. What? Oh, nothing. Both of them got home safely. And they're really in luck, Lynn tells her mother. She and Ethel met two of the nicest boys and they're going out with them tonight. Why do these cookies taste like ass? Because I baked them in my pants. And where did they meet them, Mrs. Co asks. Do they well, like Lynn cookies? They don't know their names yet. She and Ethel missed their bus and... You mean they picked you up and you don't even know them? But I do know well, them, Mother, in the biblical sense. Strangers. She may be old-fashioned, she tells her daughter, but that's fine. Lynn runs off screaming, you're ruining my life! Gets the bad news. Did Lynn's the door tell her? No. Well, it's tough. Mom's being a bitch. I think she's on the rag. Guess it's just you and your hand tonight. But Ethel certainly isn't going to give up a good time. And can't Even wait to do her first own. porn shoot. Lynn wishes she had a mother like Ethel's. One who never forbids her daughter anything. That's why Ethel is a whore. See you later, Ethel says. Maybe. Well, I wish that were all there was to it. The spell would be a lot shorter if it was. At staying home. But life is not quite that simple. When one breaks the rules, we pay for it. How much does it cost to break the rules? Three pity. I wish I could go get raped like her. Walt soon decides that without Lynn, three is a crowd. So they Only drop him off at a brothel. Now Ethel is really on her own. No, she's not. That guy's with her. Most horror movies start with showing sounds like that. I suppose just about here the horse laughs are starting in the audience. All no, right. those so started at laugh. the beginning of the film. Of course, Ethel isn't laughing. She can almost hear all the warnings she never listened to about being picked up by strangers. And here's something really funny. He has shit breath. That's not fair. The oh, other girl traded her life for a headline and Ethel gets it for kissing a guy with bad breath. Like Mr. and Mrs. Ryan and Ethel herself. And I can tell you about hundreds of cases. I hope you're beginning to get the idea. But you like to tell tales of rape and murder to get off? And Edie, too. She's going to a detention home for three months. Where she will have to change the pins. Plenty of time to think about whether a few minutes of showing off or feeling sharp is worth a lifetime of regrets. Speaking of regret, I regret that, watching this film. You're not the young American men and women I think you are. Think it over. Why not get really wise? Really hip? Don't be a sucker. There he goes, calling a sticky again. 
Finally, the good part. Jay Park Rednecks, we don't make bad movies, we make bad movies better.